Hi guys, continuing our lecture series on the embed platform by ARM. Today we will look at interfacing a 16 by 2 character LCD. The fundamentals lecture I'm assuming you've seen and using the character LCD we will take the matrix keypad which you did in the previous lab and we will interface these two using the ARM embed platform. The focus of the lab is more towards the character LCD but we will continue the keypad program so that you are familiar with that already. So once you understand the character LCD then you will be able to use the matrix keypad with the character LCD. Alright, so the agenda for today's lecture is we will look at the interfacing, the connections of the embed board, then we need to look at some special functions or APIs for the LCD, then we will look at how to display different characters on the LCD and then we will look at the program. Alright, so just a quick review of the LCD. This is what a typical LCD looks like and the pin here starting is pin number 1 and the pin here is pin number 16. As I discussed in my lecture a 16 cross 2 typical LCD has 16 pins starting with pin number 1 is VSS or ground, then pin number 2 is VDD, pin number 3 is your contrast pin which we typically connect to ground, we typically connect this to ground, pin number 4 is your register select, pin number 5 is your read write, now most pro mostly we always write to the LCD, we don't read from the LCD so even this terminal we connect to ground. Pin number 6 is your enable, this is an important pin so please don't forget this. Then I also mentioned that you could use your LCD in two modes that is 4 bit mode or 8 bit mode. To save wires we will use the 4 bit mode so we ignore the lower 4 bits and we will use DB4 to DB8 so these are, I'm sorry DB7 so these are the bits that we will be using and then pin numbers 15 and 16 are for the backlight again in this lab we will ignore these pins so in effect in today's lab we will be using pin number 1, 2, 3, 4, we won't, we'll be connecting 5 to ground, we'll be using 6, then we'll be using pin numbers 11, 12, 13 and 14. So now with the LCD review, let's look at the connections to the embed board. Now the freedom board has a lot of pins. Now this is what the freedom board looks like. If you remember in the matrix keypad program, we used these pins for connecting to the matrix keypad. We started off from here. So we will let this be as it is since you are familiar with it, we will use these pins here to connect to the LCD. So let's look at the connections. I connect pin number 1 to ground. I connect pin number 2 to P5 volts underscore USB. Why do I use this? Because the power supply or 
for the VDD for my LCD is 5 volts but all these digital pins all of them these 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 and these their output is 3.3 volts so for me to be able to power or provide enough voltage to my LCD I need to use this particular pin this special pin here for connecting this to the VDD of my LCD that is pin number 2. Please understand this very carefully that the power supply for my LCD I need to give it as 5 volts and this is the only pin the only pin on the board which can give 5 volts okay so this is p5 volts underscore usb now pin number three as i said the contrast will be connected to ground pin number four that is the register select is ptc9 pin number five ground is your read write then the enable is ptc8 my db4 is pta5 DB5 is PTA4, DB6 is PTA12, DB7 is PTD4. Let's look at these connections on the board. So I start off with PTC9 and I connect this to my register select. I take PTC8 and I connect this to my enable. PTA5 is my DB4. This is my DB5, DB6 and PTD4 is DB7. Let's confirm this again. PTD4 is DB7. Okay. So we will make these connections. Now what we will do is we will take this ground terminal, put it on the breadboard and then we will take the ground connections off here and make it to the LCD. The advantage is that you are saving connections on the board. We do have we do have one ground terminal here, we have one ground here and here. But to save that, we just use one, connect it on the breadboard and then take wires from the breadboard. It's one and the same, but this is just good practice. Okay, just to refresh your memory, we will use these pins for the matrix keypad. And we will use this side for the LCD. Now, I, as I mentioned always, this you can choose to change these pins you can connect the LCD even here it's your choice but just make sure that you specify this in the program please be careful about that okay now let's look at some special functions for the LCD in your LCD program on the embed compiler you have to declare the LCD component before you declare you have to import the LCD library we will see this in the lab session so don't worry about that and when you declare the LCD component with that you have to also declare the pin locations for the LCD so this is how it goes this is the name of the function text LCD this is the name of your variable so you can choose this name you can choose this name okay now what's important here is that the order in which you specify these pins the first pin is your register select the second pin is your enable, 
the third pin is your d4 the fourth is d5 d6 d7 so these are your connections as you see that i had connected my rs to ptc9 my enable to ptc8 let's look at that quickly my rs was connected to ptc9 my enable was connected to ptc8 pta5 goes to db4 pta4 to db5 and so on so let's look at this function again the first is rs the second is enable the third is d4 d5 d6 d7 now after the comma you have to specify the type of the lcd whether it is a 16 cross 2 or is it a 20 cross 2 or is it a 20 cross 4 in our case we are using a 16 cross 2 so when we take the 16 cross 2 we need to specify this here and this completes the initial declaration of the LCD component now after you're done with this let's look at some functions to set the location of the cursor and to display to set location you use the function lcd dot locate the column number and the row number so we have 16 columns and two rows 0 to 15 0 to 1 if it starts from 0 you have 0 and 1 0 and 15 so for example the if i write lcd dot locate as 7 dot 7 comma 1 then actually i am looking at row number 2 and column number 8 column number 8 since it starts from 0 and it will go so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 that is 8 so that way you can set the location of the cursor and when you say lcd dot print f this is lcd dot print f in brackets when you write the character it will write this term at the location set by you so when you do lcd dot locate followed by lcd dot printf it prints the locate it prints the term that you wrote here at the location specified by you okay we will see this as part of the code so i hope that the special functions were clear so you need to use the text lcd function with the variable name this variable name you can specify then you specify the pin names in the order of rs enable d4 d5 d6 d7 okay now another thing that you need to be careful about that if you want to display numbers on LCD which we will see in the next lab you need to do something called as a typecast typecast is converting the one type of number or character into another data type so if you must convert from int to float or int to character now for LCD you need the character or string so how do we do that we first declare a character with the name again this is the name you can specify now I use the length 15 because 0 to 15 is equal to 16 which is 16 cross 2 so it gives me the number of columns and then 
what I can do is I also specify a float now this is the float example I'm taking in the next slide I will show the integer example so I take the float value first I set the location so LCD dot locate can you guess what this must be this is the seventh row am I right no I'm wrong this is the seventh column and first row so if we look at the LCD One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is row one, which is actually starts from zero. So this is the location at which my cursor will spot. And then what I do is I use a sprintf, which is I print this analog float point value into buffer with a floating point number. So percentage 0.2 means up to two decimal points. So this is the syntax in C which you need to remember. So I take the analog value, I put it, I print it into the character buffer and up to two decimal points, hence I say percentage 0.2f. If I say percentage 0.3f, this would mean up to three decimal points and then what I do is I use the LCD dot print F command which is the print for the LCD and I take this buffer and I print it so suppose the analog value was 3.354 in this case let's take an example 3.354 so this would print the value 3.35 as I said up to two decimal points into buffer and then this will display here so I will have 3.3 and then you'll have your 5 here specified on the next location okay so then suppose if I have an integer Again, the same concept, I'll first specify a buffer of the type char, which is character. Then an integer, let's say simple value. I set the location, so this is the 14th column and second row. I print this value here. Now when I say percentage 3D means it's up to three digits of integer including please be careful including the sign so in if you use the signed integer and suppose the number is minus three five four six seven just I'm giving a random number it will take only three digits okay the concept is still the same this is typecasting so that said now let's look at the program for interfacing the matrix keypad with the LCD now if you look at this program very carefully the first few lines are very familiar you have already used this as part of the matrix keypad now this is your text LCD as I explained this is the name of the variable LCD you could name this as anything you want now one very important point is you need to include this header file which is this text LCD dot H now you also have to import you have to import the LCD library which we will show you in the lab this is same as what I mentioned that PTC 9 is your RS PTC 8 is your enable PTA 5 through PTD 4 
is your data that is d4 to b7. Now these parts of the program are quite familiar. This is from your matrix keypad where you are setting the column high, all the columns high, then you're setting column 1, setting column 2, setting column 3. Now this is interesting. If key 1 is pressed, I want to display the number 1 on the LCD. So I set the location that is LCD.locate as 7, 1. So this is row number 2 and column number 8. Okay. And then I just print the value 1. Here we are directly printing the value. We are not doing typecasting as I explained here. This we will do in the next lab. For now we will use the simple printf command. So again if key 1 is pressed I am showing 1. If key 2 is pressed then I am showing 2. You are familiar with this logic from the previous lab. So instead of displaying on the 7 segment now I am displaying on the LCD. That is fairly straightforward. Now comes your key scan function which you used as part of your matrix keypad which is quite straightforward. First you set column 1 high, you scan row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4. Then you set column 2 high, you say row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4. Then you set column 3 high and then you set row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4. Okay. Now your main function is very important. Now lcd.cls is another function. It's fairly clear. Basically, it just clears the LCD screen. So, lcd.cls will clear the LCD screen and then just for a cosmetic purpose, we are putting the name lcd.printf. If you choose, you can put your name here. It would be fun. So, you just say lcd.printf. Then comes your while one. I am scanning my keys and then I am waiting. Now depending on if my button 1 is pressed, let's just a, take an example, if key 1 is pressed then I call the key 1 function. When my key 1 function is called, I set the location and I print it on my LCD. Okay, just a brief understanding of the program again that if this is my embed board and this is my matrix keypad. So if this button is pressed then on my LCD I will show that I will display the number 1. So the expected output would be something like this. Let's quickly draw a very primitive LCD. And so on. This is up to 15. So if you have the number 1 pressed, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So here you would have the number 1 display. If this is pressed, then you would have the number 3 displayed here. So that's how the program would work. We will see this in the lab session. So I hope the program was clear and the fundamentals and the connections of the LCD module. So I shall see you in the lab session. Thank you.